Self-care is weird. From sage plants that you burn to good luck plants, self-care is a multi-billion dollar industry that seems like more and more of a finesse every time I see some other weird thing about it. Now don't get me wrong, self-care is very much needed. Sometimes it's fine to just take the day off and do nothing. Sometimes it's fine to order food because you don't feel like cooking. Self-care is perfectly okay. The problem with self-care is that a lot of the self-care that's popular comes in the form of buying things. Things like this $11 ice roller or this $60 Malibu yoga mat that can be had for half the price with a four and a half star rating. Things like that are what I'm talking about. I feel like we've had this notion of because we buy things, that means we're caring for ourselves. But most of the time, that couldn't be further from the truth. Self-care went from taking a day off and chilling to watch TV to buying all natural shower bombs within a few short years of each other. And it's kind of confusing to me. This is not backed by any sort of study at all. This is just me speculating in my room. But I think that with people being inside for a lot of 2020 and for the first half of 2021, it made people fed up with being inside. So they turned to online shopping to help them cope with the mental chains, for lack of a better word, of being inside. And let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with that. In the past two years, we've seen chaos on a scale that we've never seen before, so it's completely warranted. But I'd like to see how much sales went up by for things like yoga mats and face masks and other self-care things like that. No wonder Amazon reported record-breaking sales on its October Prime Day sale of 2020. Source link down below. The issue that I have with these self-care things is that these things are social media's definition of self-care and not the actual version of self-care, if that's even what you want to call it. This is influencers making videos about $60 face masks and that face roller thing that I talked about earlier. But is that self-care or is that just consumerism disguised as self-care? And yes, I get it. Buying things feels good. The feeling that you get of seeing that your package is on the way or that it'll be delivered by the end of the day, it gets you a bit excited inside. But is buying all those things actually caring for ourselves? It's almost like us participating in this version of self-care is actually harming our future selves. Think about it. If you buy this face mask right now for $40, it might seem like it's helping you now, but most times doing the thing that feels good in the moment isn't the best thing to do in the long term. Let me explain what I mean. Using social media's definition of self-care involves doing things like buying those things in your cart on Amazon or ordering non-healthy food in the name of self-care. But that's just doing things that feel good now and not actually caring for yourself. If we are really gonna talk about caring for yourself, you probably wouldn't buy those things in your cart on Amazon and you would go and get something of nutritional value to eat. That's really self-care. I'm not saying that all social media forms of self-care are destructive. I'm just saying that most of the time, because social media is telling you that eating a bag of chips is self-care, that doesn't mean that it actually is. The weirdest thing about self-care is that there's this thing around it where it's doing what feels good today. But as I said before, doing the thing that feels good today isn't always what's actually best for you and your future self. It's actually doing what doesn't feel good today so that you can feel good later. It's like delayed gratification. It's a weirdly opposite thing that we've come to adopt in our daily lives. Eating the piece of chocolate feels good now, but down the line, it's actually not good. On the contrary, doing the thing that doesn't feel good now, like drinking more water or eating carrots, is actually better for us down the line. When I was bad with money and buying shoes and clothes and you know all that kind of stuff, that felt good. But now, after biting the bullet and paying off my credit cards and stuff, that was actually caring for myself but it didn't feel good in the moment. But now I feel good about it. All I'm trying to say is that there are plenty of things that you can do besides 
buying stuff to line the pockets of Amazon's shareholders. Personally, going for walks is a good one of mine. Some people might journal, some people might listen to music, some people might try and do all of them at once. Be careful if you do try and do so. And some people might just sit there and do nothing. I'm not here to judge you based on the things that you do to practice self-care. You know, everyone's different and you should do what works best for you. You should try and see self-care as looking after your future self, if that makes sense. Sometimes it's doing the dishes the night before you go to bed so that you wake up to a clean kitchen and the dishes from the night before are not on your mind. This video was not meant to tell you to never buy anything again when it comes to self-care. If you want to buy those face masks because you like them and they make you feel good about yourself, then go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you and you shouldn't let anyone stop you from doing that. Just make sure that you're not buying those things to cover up the real problems in your life or to cover up things that you're avoiding. At the end of the day, one way or another, you're the one that's going to have to deal with those things. Because remember, conflict delayed is conflict multiplied. And as always, thanks for watching.